This is Rob Tubber for Boxing Social. Delighted to be joined, as always, by Dave Caldwell. We're at the O2 Arena in the immediate aftermath of Sergio Garcia's unanimous decision victory over Ted Cheeseman. Dave, how are you? I'm good, thanks. I'm really good. Um, it's been a good night. It's been, it's been a strange night as well. Let's start at the top, work our way down. Sergio Garcia's performance over Ted Cheeseman. Sum it up for me. Boxed well. It was, it boxed really well, but it was made to look a million dollars because of the, of the tactics or or the mindset of, of Ted Cheeseman tonight. I just thought that he uh, he just put his hands up, walked forward, and thought to himself, "You're going to tire out more than me, quicker than me, and when you do, then I'm going to beat you up." And the problem is, is you can do that, but you've got to be evading shots at the same time. And it wasn't; it was just taking shots. Just because you got your hands up, don't mean that your defence is good. Um, and it took it, everything out of him. And then as the rounds went on, because he was having to summon up more energy, his punches were more forced, and he was swinging, he was missing like mad, like crazy. And it's again, it's zapping more and more energy out of you. I started finding it uncomfortable watching it when he started dropping his hand, yeah. putting his head down just to take the shots. I'm like, that stuff, that's just crazy. You know, and, and listen, he's, he's got the biggest balls and the biggest heart that I can ever imagine to see. But it's also crazy and it's not safe, it's not healthy. I mean, that stuff, it's, it, I haven't seen anything like that since I've seen, I think Rocky did it in Rocky 4 with Drago when he's putting his hands down and he's putting his head down. You can't do that sort of shit. Club of Lang, these are movies. It's a little bit like Ricardo Mayorga. Yeah, but Mayorga did it like in brief little glimpses yeah, and then fired back. Or he'd do it in a fight where he was competitive and winning and landing shots. He just did it. And he just get, he's, problem is, he's getting beat up round after round after round and then he starts doing it when he's already had a lot of punishment taken out of him. It's, that's not safe. And, and first and foremost, I hope they took him to hospital. I hope he's all right and he goes home um, tomorrow because I think they'll keep him in over for observation. And then I hope he has a long rest from boxing because he needs it. His body needs it because that has just took years off his career. Now, I was sat behind you. Uh, you were screaming, go to the body, Ted, yeah. go to the body, Ted. Other than that, what else could he have done? Use his jab. Um, been a little bit cuter in his attacks instead of just walking forward, following, walking forward, walking forward. Um, it's not about comparisons or anything, but... Everybody jumps on Fowler's back and say that Fowler's got no, no defence. Fowler's tenses up and loads up on everything. I'm sorry, but he's nothing like that. Nothing like that. And, and if you want me to be blunt and honest, it's lucky we weren't fighting Fowler tonight. Because Garcia don't punch. You know, he don't punch. And right from the start, when you're giving yourself as a target, somebody like Fowler or anybody else, like we were talking about Jared Hurd and things like that, mate, that's not good. I don't care how tough you are. That's not good for your health. And it's a, it's a, it's a, a warning to all these young kids out there. Don't look too far ahead. You've just won the British title. You're fighting for a European title in a big, in a, you know, another step up. Don't, before you've even fought for that European title, don't start talking about world titles. We, we, we seem to want to have this mentality of rushing. Winning a British title is a great thing, but it means you're domestic level. You're not, you know, you're not, doesn't automatically mean because you won a British, you should be fighting for world titles. Just because you win a European title against a decent fighter, not a world level fighter, doesn't mean that you're the top end at European level. And Cheeseman proved that tonight because he's, he's talking about Jared Erd and people like that before he fights for European and he's gone and lost at European. So he's, he is domestic level. There's nothing wrong in that, but learn your craft at domestic level. This is why I've, I've always said before, and before we fought Cheese, before we went on to that level, I wanted Fowler to have a real fight first, a Fitzgerald, because that is a bit of grounding for him. That is a real fight, rather than just the fighting guys that aren't there to win. I want somebody across the ring from him that's going to present problems at a fighter, whether or not you, you, you beat and blow him away or what, that's there trying to win and believes they're going to win, because that's a different set of problems that they give you than a guy that just turns up to give it a go. Now, very aware of what you've just said, but still I'll ask anyway, does this kind of put pay to a potential foul of Cheeseman fight for the foreseeable future? Yeah, because I think Cheeseman needs a, a long rest and we're not going to hang around just waiting and waiting and waiting. So we'll have fights, you know, um, before that. You know, Fitzgerald, please God, it gets past Fitzgerald. Then 
he'll, we'll look to fight again soon. Um, Cheeseman, I don't expect to be out for a long time, and I hope he's not. Um, so that's a fight that may be a bit being you know, put back a little bit. You mentioned Scott Fitzgerald. Um, I don't know. Were you here in time yeah. to watch him? Oh, of course, you're working tonight. No, uh, no tracksuit tonight. Um, what did you make of Scott Fitzgerald's performance? Well, very, very powerful, very strong, very aggressive. Blah blah blah. That's what you'd expect him to look against a guy that's a lot smaller than him and who he wanted to go out there and make a bit of a statement off with. Um, so he got the run out that he wanted. Um, he'll have all the spars in the gym. And um, yeah, let's let's go March 3rd, can't wait. What did Anthony Fowler think to his performance? That plonker missed it. <laughs> I actually knew that to be fair. Do you, do you know what? He, he, was, he knew he was meant to be here for it. He was here earlier on the I didn't know. I thought when he's when the saying Fowler's late, he's stuck in traffic. I thought he'd, he'd set off late from Liverpool when I was filming at like that. But then when they told me no, he'd actually been here and filmed some stuff for um, uh, Chris Lloyd and Barker's uh, stuff. I was like, so he's been here, gone, and now he's late. So yeah, so he's, he's missed it. So he hasn't seen it, but he hasn't missed much to be honest. We're not we're not going to be studying that fight to, in order how to beat Scott Fitzgerald. No. Final word on you before we move on to uh, Dillian White and the heavyweights. Uh, you've got yourself a new charge, Atif Shafiq. No, I manage him. You manage him? So, what's, so you manage him but you don't train him? No, I manage Atif and I manage uh, Lee Wood that I've signed as well. Um, two good fighters, two very good fighters. But I don't so it's because Atif, uh, Atif, you came up against Atif with Lee Appleyard? Yes. Yes, I managed Lee Appleyard. I didn't train him. <laughs> so let me get that straight. Oh, these are fighters that I manage. Um, so yeah. Um, so it's quite funny, really, because uh, after that fight, uh, Apple Yard left me, and obviously that's Atish's last fight, and he's he's come and signed with me. So um, that's funny how boxing works. So he's, is he still going to be trained by Dominic Ingle? No, nope. he's now trained by Arun Edley up in uh, up in Manchester. In your role as kind of manager, for, well, you're also a trainer. I know you used to promote as well, but does that kind of do you want to train and manage in an ideal world? I'm, I'm only I'm only training selected fighters that I want to work with um, uh, purely because I want to I want to make sure whatever schedule I've got with my fighters that I train I want to finish it at three o'clock so I'm I'm able to pick my kids up from school I pick my kids up from school I'm with my kids and then you know Theo plays football my daughter does music I want to be around my kids I don't want to be stuck in a gym missing out on all that because I did that earlier on in their lives and when you know when Theo were a baby I never saw him my daughter was younger you know I'd, I'd hardly see her um, I don't want to do that and, and luckily you know luckily it took, it took 28 years doing it. I ain't just fallen into it but obviously over the last couple of years I'm now in a position where I don't have to be in the gym until half eight at night so that's how I choose to be you know it's not nothing to do with my ego or anything like that I just want to make sure that the fighters I work with appreciate what I do because it's hard work on me. Uh, you know, my, my neck's in, in a bad way. I've got injuries all over. I have to see a chiropractor four times a week. I don't know if you've noticed, I'm only little and getting blasted on pads every single day by numerous fighters isn't really a good health choice. Um, so, yeah, um, it, it's about doing what I want to do so I can I can spend my time how I choose to choose, choose to do it. Okay, just final words. I know you're desperate to get off. Um, Dillian White was here tonight, said that the Anthony Joshua rematch is not happening. Uh, said he's going to box April the 20th. Yep. First and foremost, who would you like to see him fight? Well, I'm hearing it's either Brazil, um, Ortiz or Povetkin. Ortiz and Povetkin are hard, hard fights. I think Brazil's a, a good fan-friendly fight. But I think he's stylistically it's something that will give Dillian um, less physical problems I think he'll, he'll suss that out and, it, and Dillian deserves a bit of a touch I know it's not a touch but he'll get the ranking to sort of solidify his ranking um, and, and get um, yeah, Mauricio Sullivan was talking to me about a, an interim title potentially being on the line but that's, yeah but that's bullshit isn't it that's bullshit it's, it, it is what it is all these interims and shit I remember when interims were brought out because if a champion was injured and he was out for a long period of time and just to keep it big, uh, keep the division active yeah then all of a sudden now they start bringing out these interims just because you broke your toenail or you decided you can't fight or you want to fight somebody else so oh yeah we'll give you an interim title shot that's bullshit 
you know. And so I'd, I don't care if it's an interim title, you know, make it an international title, make it, you know, make it for a ranking or whatever. It's a good fight. It's a good fight. And and you know, I feel sorry for Dillian, but he has to keep his career moving. So if that's the fight that is, and that's the fight that is. Disappointed not to see Joshua in with Dillian White, or alternatively, Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury. My my order was. Um, Winner of Fury Wilder, Dillian, and then whoever. Not really, you know, whatever. What do you make of Joshua Miller? Perfect sense for if you fight in America. It gives you know it gives you a good excuse to go out there and, and, and fight in America. Every, listen, you can't win. Everyone says, oh, you need to go and fight in America, prove yourself, blah blah blah. So he's going over to America. Now he's going to get panned for going over to America and fighting in America. You can't win. You know, that's the thing about this game, you can't win. You, no matter what you do, you can't win. You just gotta do what's best for you. And what's best for AJ, if you can't get the Wilder and the Fury fight, they've deemed is going out to America and fighting Miller. What's best for Fury is to get a rematch with, with Wilder, not to fight AJ now, so we've gone that way. What's best for Wilder is to clear up his, his, his reputation and fight Fury, not fight AJ. That's what they're doing now. That's what's happening. Everybody's doing what's best for them. And in, unfortunately, for people like Dillian, is if you're on the outside without a belt, you don't call the shots. The guys that have got the belts can call the shots. That's, that's boxing. Joshua Miller, as a fight, do anything for you? Do you know what? I'm going to say this, and I'm not just trying to sell the fight. I don't, I don't, I don't get no money if Eddie sells the show out or not. I don't. But if Miller can take a shot, he's a problem. It's 300 pounds. I've been in the same changing rooms with him when I had uh, Gab McDonald fight night in Chicago. The man's massive, he's huge. And he puts his hands together quite fast and he puts a good output of punches out for a big man. So if he can take a shot, mate, he's a problem for everybody division. Now if he can't take a shot, then he's in trouble. You know, because all that size and everything like that, and the way that he's been boxing everybody, guys that aren't of any sort of level, he's gonna, he's gonna struggle with. But I'll tell you, if you can take a shot, that's interesting. That is interesting. Okay, well, Dave Cole, well, always a pleasure catching up with you. Not going to keep you too much longer. Nice to see you dressing up for once. I uh, will catch up with you soon. Cheers, mate. Thanks. Cheers.